Hey, what's up? It's your girl Kim Lucruz, and I'm back with another video, baby. If you are a returning subscriber, then you already know the vibes. But if it's the first time to this channel, then honey, don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. Now, today's video, I feel like this is the most requested for video. Ain't gonna lie, no cap detected because, like, yeah, you guys have been requesting for this video for like six months now can i just say before you guys shoot me i know i delayed i delayed this video because i wasn't gatekeeping any information okay i basically wanted to gather enough information so that when i give you guys the information it's not like you know incorrect or inaccurate and things like that i didn't want to lead you guys astray so i basically wanted to gather enough accurate information before i can share that information with you guys so I was not gatekeeping anything. I saw your DMs. I saw your comments on how to apply for medicine outside South Africa. I just wanted to get like the correct information before I say anything. And I didn't want to mislead anyone really because I feel like this is very important and it's very serious. Do you get my point? So, brief introduction, if you are new to my channel, baby. Like, okay. Okay, so basically, um, I'm Kimberly. Um, doing medicine in Zambia. I did my matric in 2019 at West School Patriot. I was the Dax Lena top student number one, six distinctions, baby girl. And then I got rejected for medicine in South Africa three times. I was waitlisted at one school, but then I didn't want to take a gap year. So I started applying outside South Africa and I got accepted in Zambia and I've been there for three years now. Currently, I'm waiting on my results. I just finished my third year and if everything goes well then by october this year i am going to be a student doctor baby <laughs> guys so please pray for me i have my notebook right here so if you see me looking down it's because like i wrote down like a couple of important notes because i didn't want to leave out any important information okay so yeah in today's video basically we're going to be talking about how to apply for medicine outside south africa right before we get into that i feel like there's certain things that you should know before you even think of applying outside south africa and i'm going to start with that first and then after that i'm going to go into how you actually apply the application process so i don't know if i'm going to divide this video into part one and part two um it depends on the length of the video as you know as i talk and i'll see how long it is because i don't want it to be too long so if i see that it's too long i'm going to divide it into part one and part two so click the subscribe button okay what should you know before applying outside south africa you need to make yourself familiar with the health professions council of south africa now this is basically like a medical board in South Africa that is responsible for um, giving licenses to all the doctors, whether you are a foreigner or whether you are basically like South African and you studied medicine in South Africa, they are responsible for making sure that your qualification is legit, your degree is proper. Um, every doctor that is practicing medicine in South Africa, they need to be registered under the HPCSA. So you need to make yourself familiar with the rules, regulations, and the policy of the HPCSA. Because after seven years of you studying medicine outside South Africa, you come back and then they tell you that your degree is not valid or they tell you that they do not recognize your degree. Guys, this has happened in the past. It is still happening and people are still making the same mistake because it will still continue to happen. So I'm your new best friend. And I'm here to give you all the teats and the beauty and the weedsy so that you don't find yourself in a situation whereby you go abroad, you go to China, you go to UK, you go wherever you want to go, you study medicine for seven years, come back into South Africa and they tell you, um, go back to school. Or they tell you, 
you cannot uh, be a doctor in South Africa. So you need basically to make yourself uh, familiar with the HPCSA because if you are to go outside South Africa or even while you are in South Africa, you still need to be registered by the HPCSA. So, and for you to be registered, there's certain requirements that you need to meet in order for you to be registered. And then after you're registered, that's when you get to sit for the licensure exam. After sitting for the licensure exam and you do pass, that's when you get your license to practice medicine in South Africa. Second, right if you're going to study medicine outside South Africa or wherever you're going to even inside this also applies right you need to make sure that your university is listed under the world directory of medical schools okay now the world directory of medical schools basically lists all the medical schools in the world and helps prospective students make informed decisions about medical schools it lists all the medical schools in the world so let's say for example you're starting to apply outside south africa you've never left south africa and you want to apply in a country where you don't even have a relative you don't have a friend and it's hard for you to get information right so you can look up whatsoever university or whatsoever medical school you find or whatever medical school that you want to apply at you can look up that university um on the world directory medical school and if it's not listed there red flag stop don't continue with the application process don't take any risk don't try to be brave you're you're going to cry so i'm going to take a screenshot and put it somewhere on the screen where i basically looked up my uh university so i study in zambia right like i said before and i'm at mulungushi university school of medicine so i looked it up the portion whereby you put the name of the institution right so i put mulungushi university school of medicine and then you put the country i put zambia and then you put uh, the location so it is basically located in a town in zambia or a city called Kabwe. So I put Kabwe there and then I clicked the search button and then boom, I found out that yes, Mungoshi University School of Medicine does exist. It is um, listed on the World Directory of Medical Schools. Do you get? So for me, that was just like green flag. You get that means you're on the right path. Okay, number three. This is very important if you are applying for medicine outside South Africa and then you want to come back into South Africa and practice medicine. Make sure that the country that you want to go and study medicine in and the country that you're going to practice medicine in as a medical doctor have similarities. By that I mean make sure that they have similar diseases that they are dealing with. Okay? And this is very important, right? I'm going to tell you guys why. Make sure that they teach similar things make sure that the syllabus is not too different you, you get my point because let's say for example um the diseases that we find in africa okay let's just use africa as a whole or southern africa the diseases that we find in africa or southern africa right are not the diseases that are going to be um endemic to places such as china so you can find that in China, maybe they do teach that disease, but they don't teach it in India. You get, whereas that disease um, in China, because it's not like seen frequently, it's rare or something like that, they don't teach it to their students in India, you get. But that disease is actually a huge problem in Africa. So you go outside the country, right? You do your degree wherever you want to go, China, wherever, Russia, you do your degree. You come back to South Africa and you don't even know anything about the diseases that south africans are struggling with in south africa you're going to struggle and this is how so many people fail their licensure exams whereby you you have graduated abroad you come into south africa and you write your licensure exam and then you fail and then you're surprised like how did i fail that is because you are not educated on the diseases that south africans are struggling with so you need to make sure that the country that you're going to and the country that you're going to practice in when it comes to the diseases that we face make sure that they do teach those diseases and make sure that there's not much of a difference let's take malaria for example right malaria is a very huge thing especially in africa right it's a very huge thing but then when you go to china malaria is not really a big issue do you get so they don't really dive deep into it and then you come back into Africa after getting your degree abroad. And then they didn't even teach you the, the fundamentals of malaria. And then 
Malaria is something that we as African, as a whole, not necessarily in South Africa. South Africa doesn't really have a lot of malaria cases. It's very rare. But in Zambia, malaria is actually a huge problem. So you come back to a country like Zambia, you study the board, and then you now have a patient that is malaria, but you can't even treat common malaria. Do you get my point? So you're going to struggle to settle in, and you're also going to struggle with your licensure exam. So keep that in mind as you choose the country that you want to go to, as you choose the university that you're going to go to that is outside South Africa. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is the language. I remember when um, in 2020, when I was still looking for a uh, university and I was still applying, I remember I was busy with an application process and I was applying to the University of Russia. Um, I was applying to university in Russia. I've forgotten the name. It's not the University of Russia. It's a university in Russia that I was applying to in 2020. Everything was going well because they were even offering like um, scholarships. And then I think I made it to the next round. And then once I reached the next round, that's when I actually discovered that um, most of the universities in Russia, they don't teach in English. So I had to add like an 18 months. So um, for me to get the scholarship, they told me that I had to do like 18 months of me learning the language that they use in russia and then after 18 months i start with my first year for me i was like ah, i can't do that I, I for me i felt like that was just like going to be so hard for me and i felt like that was going to be such an unnecessary burden for me so research on the language as well research on the language the language that there are you is english the language that is used when teaching is english like a language that um the people around understand because it is really going to help you because as a medical doctor right or as a medical student you are going to do um let me talk from my university again i'm not sure if it's the same everywhere so from my university you do your three years that's your preclinicals right and i just finished my three years of preclinicals and then you're going to have three years where you're now where you're now going to the hospital these are called clinical rotations right so you're now going to the hospital and you're dealing with patients you're making diagnosis because medicine is a practice you know you need to practice it you can't just sit behind the book and be learning and learning and learning about the brain you need to put it into action so you have three years where you're literally in the hospital you are working you are a student doctor and you're dealing with patients so language can be a barrier when it comes to you communicating with people so at least to make things easier for yourself if you're fast with learning languages then cool it's okay but for me i felt like you know i would i felt like i would struggle a lot because even right now i'm studying medicine in zambia and i struggle a lot with the language you know but i like the fact that it's african it, there's a you know how african languages are they are a bit similar here and there so i do understand because some of them are a bit similar to zulu and then it's a bit similar to shona and then it's a bit similar to so you know how african languages are so i do struggle with communication and as i'm starting with my clinical rotations in october uh if all things <laughs> god willing i pass my exams i'm so you get so as i'm preparing to start for my clinical rotations in october i am a bit worried about the language because um i'm like okay what if i am unable to communicate with my patient do you get my point what if i can't even say headache but at least one thing i know about zambia is that where i am or where i've chosen to be put um there's a lot of english speaking people so that keeps me calm it keeps me very calm that a lot of people do understand english and they do try to speak english but then you might have the elderly individuals that can't or the little children that can't speak english and i have to like learn the indigenous language so that is something that you need to put at the back of your head when you start applying outside south africa to make it easier for yourself because you might struggle when it comes to your clinical rotations when it comes to uh, having conversations with your patients because there are certain countries whereby english is not really the the language that is uh, commonly spoken so after choosing the country right now you want to choose a university in the country there are three questions that you need to ask yourself and i wrote them down okay um number one is that university recognized in that country? When I was in grade 12, it was like 2019, I remember on the news, there were a lot of students, I think there was, like, there was even a strike whereby students were striking, graduates were striking, why? Because 
it turns out that the college that they studied it was not registered. The government did not uh, recognize the, the college. Do you get my point? So the people that graduated, imagine graduating after studying for four years, studying for five years. All those people that graduated from that college, their degrees were revoked. They are non-existent. They are not valid. You've wasted years. You've wasted time. You've, you've wasted resources. You've wasted money. That is emotional distress that you do not want to put yourself in. So don't overlook anything I'm going to say in this video because every single thing is important. Okay? So you don't want to find yourself in that situation. So make sure that whatsoever university that you're going to in a country, wherever, UK, Russia, wherever you want to go apply, Canada, I don't know where you want to go. Namibia, I don't know if the schools that you're looking at. Do you get? Make sure that the university is recognized by that government. Okay. Number two, is the university internationally recognized? The third thing that you need to do or ask, what do people in that country say about the university? Guys, I feel like this is important because I'm helping so many people apply. I just found myself in a position where I'm just helping people apply at the blue because of the video that I posted and it got like 9,000 views right now. And people just started sending me DMs on Instagram. Uh, please help me apply. I recently applied here. So I think when I was writing my exams, that was three weeks ago when I was writing my exams, um, I received a DM on Instagram and um, this girl was like, hey, how are you doing? I saw your video on YouTube. Um, you motivated me. And I applied for medicine outside uh, to Namibia. She said she applied in Namibia. And she's a South African. I was like, oh, congrats, girl. How can I help you? And then she was like, um, well, there's this university right where I'm applying. And then now they're asking for money before. They're asking me to make my final decision from coming to the school and then send uh, them a lot of money. Now, in my mind, I was like, oh, okay, congratulations. Because she even received an acceptance letter. And the acceptance letter was looking legit, right? And then I was like, okay, let me just ask my friend if it is legit, right? So I asked my neighbor. She is a fifth year. Uh, she's also studying medicine in Zambia, but she's at a different university. She's studying at Cavendish University. So I asked her, I was like, hey, do you know this university in your country? There's someone that's asking uh, me about it. Is this how they do their acceptance and whatnot and whatnot? And then she was like, ah, uh -uh, no, tell her to run away. Because apparently in Namibia, there is only one medical school in Namibia. So, and that's the university of what? Of Namibia. It only has one medical school. In the entire country, there is just one. So that means this other university that has been busy on social media, um, asking people to apply, application process, giving people acceptance letters, is not, rec is not recognized and it's not registered. So if she would have continued, you get, if she would have continued and applied there, she would be to waste six years of her life at a university that is not recognized by that government in that country. And then the last part, I feel like this video is already too long because I'm looking at the time. I feel like it's almost 30 minutes. Um, okay, to not make this video long, I think I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to do a part two where I'm actually going to talk about how you actually apply, like the, the application process for you to apply outside South Africa, the documents that you need to have, your grades, your subjects study permits your visas i think i'll talk about that in a different video so that this video is not too long thank you guys so much for watching bye